My name is Liz and welcome to the Tiny Treatery. And today I'm gonna try to paint an eight inch sheet cake using these two palette knives. I've seen people like on the web paint cakes with a palette knife and I'm kind of really intrigued by the idea because it doesn't involve using a piping bag, which I kind of hate doing because it does feel very wasteful, but like sometimes, you know, you gotta do it to get the decoration you want. But I'm gonna attempt to kind of paint like a little Halloween scene on this sheet cake and see how it goes. I am not a painter, I never have been, so I don't really know if this is gonna turn out at all. And if it doesn't, then you're just gonna watch me fail because I do not have the time to do a backup plan. So I'm going in blind and I'm just gonna do my best and see what I get. No recipe on screen because I already made the cake in my mass bake extravaganza and I already have the buttercream too. So I couldn't even do that if I wanted. So I guess I'll just meet you in the kitchen. Welcome to the kitchen. Here is my sheet cake. Just took it out of the freezer. Here's my buttercream that's been thawing a little bit to get it warm enough to start working with. So the first thing I have to do is dye all the colors that I think I'm gonna want. I'm not the best with colors. I know some people can like look at a color and know like what you need to add and whatever to like get it to be what you want. I do not possess that skill. You know, maybe over time, over many, many years, I can somewhat get closer to being able to do that. But right now, I'm just gonna be like going in blind, trying to get some colors. So I guess I'll show you that because it's something. Okay, so I've dyed three colors here and I'm gonna use these for the gradient of the night sky, hopefully. I got my cake out on my cake board and I'm gonna try and paint on the sky now and then I'll need to let it like sit for a little bit in the freezer and crust over before I do like the actual scenery. my sky gradient. The bottom color is really tiny and it might get covered up by the scenery I'm doing so I don't know what the point of that was but even though it's not the most proportional gradient I think it went pretty well actually in terms of blending it and getting it to look smooth. So now I have to dye the colors for all the parts of the scene that I want to put on top of the sky.
okay, have my colors that I think I'll need all prepared. And it's time to do the scary part, the much more difficult part than doing a gradient of painting the scene. Oh my god! It's a little Halloween cake! Honestly, honestly, my power. You know, every time I try to do something that I've never done before with cake decorating, I always preface it by saying, I'm not an artist, I'm terrible at art, I don't know how to draw, I don't know how to paint, whatever. All of that is like true. Like if I were to try and replicate this on paper or like with actual paint, I think it would be a disaster because you know, anytime I try to draw, it just does not work out. But I'm really happy with how this turned out. Oh my gosh. The gradient looks really nice. And honestly, I think it's okay that the bottom light part got covered up because it might've been like a little too light relative to the rest of the night sky. My pumpkins, honestly, I think they could use some work but they're still pretty cute. And I did the same sculpting smoothing technique that I did in my back to school cake with the apple, where I just put a blob of icing on for the pumpkin, left it in the freezer for a handful of minutes and then took it out and then sculpted into a coffin because the icing as it is without being hardened is just too gloopy to work with and get this level of smoothness. The moon is okay, you know, probably not my favorite part of it, but I'm glad it's included. I think it would be a little empty without it. So I'm glad it's there. The tree though, is very obviously, in my opinion, the star of the show. I mean, look at that texture. Look at the little swirl around the hole with the little creature peeking out with its spooky eyes. I almost didn't put the spooky eyes on there because I thought it would ruin it. And I really liked the way that I got the smooth black hole with the swirling tree bark around it, but I'm glad. I think, it, I think it's okay that I put the yellow eyes in there. They're not perfect, but I'm glad that I added them. Wow, literally, literally, a work of art. It's kind of hard to show you from the taste test table because it is a horizontal cake and that's not very visible from where you are now, but at least I have all these close-up videos for you to see it. Hopefully is in as high quality as I am seeing it right now. Leave a comment by the way about how you feel about videos that are just about the art. You know, maybe baking is boring because really I'm not that knowledgeable about baking. I just use other people's recipes. So it might not be that interesting to watch me just copy other people's recipes and then result in a cake. Maybe you would rather watch me just decorate. And honestly, that would make my life easier. So if this video is way more interesting than all my other ones, please let me know because that would be a win for everyone. Better videos, me having an easier time making the videos. Could I really ask for more? No. All right, so full disclosure, I have a friend coming over to hang out and I want them to see the cake 
before I cut into it for the taste test, because a lot of my cakes don't get to be seen by people in real life other than me, because I make them for the channel and then I cut into them and then I end up eating them before I see anyone. I want someone else to view this beautiful work of art in person without there being a corner cut out of it. But it's gonna be awkward because I'm gonna film the taste test while they're here, because I also want them to eat some of it because I don't need this whole cake. So I wanted to do all of the talking about the art process and how I felt about it before that. And then I'll be back and there will be somebody sitting on the couch watching me eat this cake on camera. But it won't be that interesting anyway because it's just vanilla with vanilla buttercream. But I am interested to see if it tastes like really bad because it's been sitting in the freezer. Curious about how well it's been preserved. So at least I have that to assess. So I guess I'll be back with someone watching me film, which is uncomfortable, but it's what has to happen. And then I'll do the taste test and send you on your way. Okay, I'm back, and like I said, there's someone in the room now, so it's kind of awkward, but I, I'm gonna taste it now. I think I'm going to cut this corner up here by the top, what is it, the top left by the tree, because it's the least interesting, and I don't want to ruin the prettiest parts of the cake yet, so. It won't be a very exciting thing to taste, but I am interested to see how well the frosting and cake held up after being in the freezer for like two weeks. I'm already suspecting that it's dry, so that's not a good sign. Mmm, what the f <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to cuss my videos. <laughs> There's someone being in the room is like making me like act weird and say that words. Um, anyway, yeah, this is like kind of not good. It's like crumbly or something. Like it's fine, but it's definitely not as good as it would be if it were fresh. Can you try biting this and tell me if it's weird? Okay, I'll just get you a really small piece for now. <laughs> Here. Okay. All right, I'm crazy, but I just feel like it's kind of dry. Isn't it dry? Okay, I don't know if it's supposed to, but at least it's not terrible according to someone other than me. Hopefully everyone enjoyed the painting of the cake. Leave a comment if you like decoration focused videos. And yeah, thanks for watching and subscribe for more baking adventures. Ugh. I hate doing that when there's someone in the room, it's weird.